Yeah, um, so I'm Swansea Valley, born and bred. Yeah. Um, lived here all my life, just in the village in Penakai. Um, so I live and work within the valley here and within the surrounding area. Um, so my parents live in Penakai as well. Um, and that's where all my grandparents have sort of grown up as well. My father's a stonemason. Is uh, he? Yes, yeah, so he's, uh, and to be fair to him, he's quite good at it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so he gets a lot of work within the area. Yeah. Um, my mother used to work in the bank and that works for local authority. Yeah. Um, and then my grandparents, so my, my grandfa one, one grandfather used to be uh, a farmer, had yeah. worked on a lot of farms. Uh, my grandmother used to work in a local school in Colbran yeah. as a dinner lady. Uh, and then on the other side of my family, my other grandfather was a miner. You see? Yeah, just down the road in various collieries. Yeah. And then uh, my other grandmother was an admin in a, lo a, lo a local factory down in Australia. Nice. Um, I think it's been it's it's been good really. I think that everyone sort of there is hard working. Yeah. Um, and that is sort of passed down through the generations to to myself now. Um, and it's just sort of like to have it's good to have that work ethic which has been passed down from them. Yeah, and it's quite nice to think that all my family have worked within the local area. Um, yeah. Sort of, it sort of means something. Like a lot of people travel about working, but it's sort of nice to keep it local, really. Yeah. Yeah. Don't well, to, I, I've been down Big Pit and I've seen sort of what it, what it's like. Um, and I, to be honest, I don't think I'd fancy it. Yeah. I think they were quite hard men back in those days. Yeah. In the conditions they were they were in, with the small sort of faces that we, they were working at, um, the temperatures, uh, the tools they were using, they were on their backs half the time. Um, and apparently, my grandfather, he was part of the, the commandos, as they say. Um, what, the rescue team? No, no, well, apparently there was a nickname in, in the local mines. Apparently, I don't know how true it is, but this is what I've been told. When there was a certain seam of rock which the normal miners couldn't get, they send in a certain group of men who, were, who were a bit more skilled and a bit harder. Yeah. And apparently, he was a part of that little group. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I've been told. Was it? Yeah. Blimey. So yeah, it's a nice bit of history. If it's, if it's true, it'd be quite cool to to think that he was, he was quite a good miner. Yeah, yeah. Did they get paid more? I don't know. I'll be honest with you, but um, that's what my grandmother told me. Right. So, yeah. uh, I think he might have had one accident in the mine, which sort of stopped him from uh, going any further. Yeah. I think he was involved in the miners' strike years ago, long long before me. I can't remember any what, of that. What, in the twenties. Yeah. Uh, yeah, back in the well, when was the miners' strike? The eighties, is it? Eighties. Oh, that eight, one, that one. Eight, Sorry, I'm going. Yeah. Was, yeah I'm, no, you're going further back. Yeah, yeah we've yeah. we've gone too far yeah, far yeah. back then. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah he was involved in that. I think so. Do you yeah. Have some stories about that. Then? I don't know. I'll be honest. We never yeah. really spoke about it much um, to to me. But um, I don't really know much about that. Yeah. I can't help you there. But yeah. I think it shaped the area, didn't it? Uh, like I, I'm I'm still quite young and I don't really remember much of it. But from looking at a bit of history and. What has happened in the past it definitely shaped the area with yeah. with how it looked um obviously years ago you would have had a lot of pieces of industry dotted about um yeah. scarring the landscape back then but now it's all a part of our history isn't it and i think people like to explore what's what's around the area the old yeah. mi sort of like mine entrances and pieces of machinery just left dotted yeah. around um and I, I think it's given the area a sense of community, like any valley within South Wales, um, how how people have sort of stuck together over the years. And I think that might have stayed within a certain extent. Is, is it still stayed now? Yeah, I, th I, I, th I think so. Obviously, times have changed completely now yeah. and there, there is no industry left. But I think there is still quite a sense of community within the Swansea Valley, definitely. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, he works within the area, really. Yeah. Um, doesn't really travel far. Yeah. Um, just locals uh, work for for people, sort of building houses and walls and what what you name it. Is he? Yeah. yeah. He, so he's there yeah. doing that. Yeah. Yeah, he does. To yeah. be honest, yeah, we get. I know we get stone from the Gourid Mountain Quarry, which is so slightly out of the Swansea Valley, just yeah. over the top there. Um, so a lot of stuff is locally sourced and sort of from old buildings which don't get used anymore. They get knocked down and. Yeah. And it was on 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 on, fa on buildings then across the area. Yeah. The, well, the, well, the park, from what I know, it, it was once a country um, uh, part of a part of Adelina's estate, Adelina Party's estate. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to see now that it's run sort of 
mostly by the Bregg Beacons National Park Authority, which owns 40 acres of it, and the rest is owned by the castle. And it's great for the community here, it gets used a lot by people. Um, if it's bringing your, uh, your children up or elderly uh, people who come around, it's quite easy access for them and it's nice for it to be used as a, as a yeah. country park, really. Uh, so I work for the Brecon Beacons National Park Authority. Yeah. Um, obviously here at Craig North, I use it as a bit of a base. I don't actually work here as, as, as such. I'm out and about in the wider countryside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, maintaining footpaths, uh, conservation work on the mountain, uh, working with local landowners and farmers. Sort of keeping, keeping the peace within this western half of the National Park. Do you need to keep the peace? Uh, in a way, yeah. It's sort of, we're sort of like a... A so the wardens are sort of like a link between the authority and the designated area and, and the communities and, a, and I think it's quite important for us even just to have a chat with locals even on the yeah, way yeah. to a job if, yeah. it, if it takes half an hour just to have a chat with a farmer or a local resident you've got that communication and that rapport with them yeah, yeah. which is, is quite important especially within the rural, rural area and especially after co during Covid people will, quite, it's quite a lonely place anyway the countryside Yeah. so is socialising by passing them on the road, just on the chat. It's part of the job, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's it's quite refreshing, really, going for a dip. It's something quite new, and it's quite popular these days going for a dip in the river. Yeah. And for me, it's quite nice just before work going in for about five six minutes, uh, ref freshen up and ready to go for the day. But yeah, I, I go for a dip in the river Tawe here. Yeah. Um, obviously, two rivers meet the Kinvech and the Tawe just in Craignos Country Park. So I think the the water from the cave system, the Hinver comes through down the Rogov, makes it that extra bit colder, I think. I've got ages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Isn't that called wild swimming? Well, it is wild swimming. Trendy. Yeah, I, yeah, a lot of people do, do go wild swimming now, like, but I wouldn't class myself as a swimmer. I just go for a dip, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> I think the countryside is changing in terms of who lives here. Um, especially COVID, I think, has sped up the process of, so you can live on a London wage and then live, actually physically live in sort of West Wales or, or, or up the Swansea Valley in this case. And I, I think it's quite tough as locals, because uh, obviously that drives up house prices and etc. Um, it's just bad for us, but then people, you can see why people want to move to the countryside. So there's definitely a shift in how things are in the countryside here now. Um, if it's for good or for bad, is a matter of opinion, but that's how it is. <laughs> but the thing is, I got nothing. I've got nothing against English people at all. I I got friends who are English. Yeah. I know I know you now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. It's it's just things are changing. And yeah. 